buy. One hundred percent. But for yeah. thirty dollars, you can see the movies you want to see on your TV. Like Mulan. Uh... <laughs> Guys, remember Mulan? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember it came out and people weren't jazzed about it. I remember the lead actress is a piece of shit. That's that's yes. about all. That's yes. About... <laughs> yes, she is. Everything else has just escaped me. Um, uh, but uh, we're doing some news tonight. Oh, yeah. There is. I'm Connor. I got Hunter, Eric, and Arlen here. Oh, that's your yeah. intro. So you it's deal up to with you it. to figure out who's who. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes. by the way, am Connor for those that didn't know. So uh, just keeping that old yes, bit alive. So I'm Lou Gonzalez. Uh, <laughs> but I'm you can also, follow uh, Hunter at uh, under uh, score uh, Young Kami. Uh, Damn it! <laughs> We're not even at the end yet. Wait, he changed it again. It's not Young underscore Kame underscore. No, it, 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 it still knows? is. Oh, it okay. might be Ebony Falcon again. We don't know. We <laughs> no, really can't right. be sure. He's dead. <laughs> you killed him. Um, I killed him. All right, this is already a great show. We're already, we're already killing it. COVID is going to kill the movie industry. Yes, that's how. Oh that's yeah, my yeah. No, that's really rough transition. Yes. Yeah, no, that's that, that was perfect. Um, because uh, Dune is moving, um, and um, man, everything packed their shit and got the fuck out of twenty twenty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can't blame them. Like it's I mean, it, yeah. Nope. What's what's the point? Mm-hmm. Uh, after Tenet uh, opened to what ten million dollars, the United Something States something dismal. Yeah, Ooh, yeah, that's yeah. like that's that's your red flag. Yep, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm I still don't understand why Disney isn't releasing any of their Marvel stuff. The well, at least Black Widow on Disney Plus, but we can mm-hmm. talk about that later. I just I yeah. I mean, it would make money. Like, don't let move. Mm-hmm. I think the. Mm-hmm. Optics of dropping the only Black Widow solo movie Good point. that's years too late on Disney Plus mm-hmm. is bad. Good point. I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. That would be a that'd be a lab, bad look, guys. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. There's a lot of people who'd be like, "Are they doing it because of COVID, or are they doing it for other reasons?" Um. So yeah. No, it's there's because a she's of... a woman. I. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah, exactly. because of vagina. You know. Yeah, they're doing it because yeah, Rise of Skywalker, her. which failed yeah. because it was a woman. Um, yeah, that movie's due for a hundred million dollar loss. I have this information from no. I'm also maybe a proud boy. <laughs> this is the this is the quartering. Um, <sighs> yeah, yeah, I I I yeah. am heartbroken about. I mean, I understand why, but Dune being mm-hmm. pushed back just. <sighs> Well, and uh, everything. Uh, Batman, yeah. Wonder Woman, Black Widow. Um, mm-hmm. I don't. Uh, Black Adam. I, those Black those Adam were all in sort of like the shaky ground. Schedule. Yeah. So, those, but the, here's the thing. Those have been in shaky ground for a while. Dune, for me, was one where it's like, okay, if that stays, there's a chance of things going back to some normalcy. Yeah. <laughs> or at least that, that's how it felt. Um, that's gone. That's, but that, here, that's here, deteriorated. Here's my question, though. If it let's say movie theaters died tomorrow, could they feasibly mm-hmm. do it all streaming? Like, is that is that even like an option for them? Um, okay. Patty Jenkins commented on this recently, and she basically said, if the model is going to go to streaming, then big expensive action movies will eventually will essentially go extinct. Oh, so what yeah. everybody wants? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right? I'd, well, I mean, that's the thing, though. It's there are still times that a big expensive action movie can be fun, mm-hmm. but we just we don't need a million of them. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. I personally, I'm just like I'm of the mind that just do it all streaming, or at least give me an option to sit at home and watch it. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. so there's a lot. There's a lot of assumptions that what I'm about to say uh, leans on. Assuming things do in some way revert back to normal at some point, um, I've always felt that the even if the theater industry as it currently stands dies, a new the- theater in- industry will eventually be born. 
um, just based around everything that we've already seen, it won't be the same industry. It will be a lot no. like what the comics industry was before COVID. Um, very niche, not really like big numbers. Um, only fanatics really, uh, I can't even think of the word right now, patronize it. Um, that's about all we can maybe expect. And or it being more like a concert, you know? Um, not what it was. Well, I mean, I could see prices for tickets rising exponentially. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. Like Definitely. that's if if as you say, like the movie industry as we know it dies, or not movie industry, but movie theaters die as we know them. Like if they do come back, I imagine it would be much less seating, and it would be uh, more of a luxury thing. Yeah. Yeah. And. I wouldn't oh be yeah, su- and expect concession prices oh, to go yeah. way oh, god. And yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if the sort of drive-in boom that we're getting, if that doesn't stick around in some way, um, because if it's if it's successful enough, it could lead to people being like, you know, what, this is actually pretty convenient. It allows me a certain level of do whatever the fuck I want to it. You know, the whole cell phone thing. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Just people just wanting to not have to worry or care about other people's feelings. I feel like that's a lot easier with the drive-in system. It's crazy because, like, I've seen people I know who go to drive-in theaters and are like, oh, yeah, we we cooked dinner and we made a whole night of it. I'm like, that seems like a really cool way to see a movie. And, like, I don't know if that would ever go away. Yeah, people really like it. No, I think it would get get more popular. Yeah, Yeah. I think it would just expand, I would assume. Yeah. I mean, it might be the primary way in which we go to a big theatrical experience in the future, um, which is a turn nobody ever expected. I don't think anybody saw that one coming. Nope. Um, (laughs) It'd be like if we all started sailing again. Uh, Just like, oh, we all do everything by ship now. (laughs) It's like, uh, okay, that was completely unexpected. Um, Yeah. That'll be weird. Anyways, that was a <laughs> a branching topic. We don't need to go too much further into doing unless there was another thought anybody had. Like, um, no, I just I think it's a uh, I think it's COVID is basically doing to uh, do what the audiences would have done to it if it wasn't COVID going on. Just like, <laughs> you know, I was gonna say, like, I know the people behind that movie are happy because they have an excuse to like really tinker with their release date and really push it. Mm-hmm. Because they don't want their blade run in their hands. Yeah, I, I, I just yeah. feel yeah. like it's it will yeah. been used. Fate, unfortunately, is to make these amazingly critically Which acclaimed sucks. films. Yeah, because there's no reason why. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Um, yeah, Did I was Lucy there, Connor. <laughs> okay. Here. Okay. Yeah, I think it's just. I mean, it's actually better than it has been some nights, but it does sound a little bit shaky tonight. No, no, I just, I uh, the way it cut off, I thought he was in the middle of a thought, mm-hmm. and it just sounded like, <laughs> like, nope, see ya. Yeah, the desert oh, that, that would be that would be par for yeah. the course. Mm-hmm. But yeah, um, like, it's yeah. I yeah I don't know I I hope yeah. I hope maybe Dune will be able to come in and be this huge thing because it'll be mm-hmm. in theaters and then the sequel will definitely happen because if it's mm-hmm. only the one half of the movie then it's gonna suck real bad and thinking like what could have been I'm gonna be real mad if they just have to leave it at one movie and it's like mm-hmm. half the story like he's he hasn't even I mean he hasn't gotten to the end of. <laughs> of the story yet he's like at the very midpoint where things are maybe starting to change um or however they're structuring that movie i really don't have any clue um yeah and you wait five to seven years because covid will still yep Mm -hmm. Uh, but we'll all have projectors by then um and we'll (laughs) so yeah it'll it'll all work out Um, or or i'll be (laughs) eating the flesh of my neighbors um anyways. Well, yeah. <laughs> Eric, I really wasn't trying to think about the Mad Max apocalypse that we could all be entering into. Um I was really trying not to, but now that you say it try yeah. and find a used sports goods store near you because you can buy uh-huh. football pads real cheap. Um yep. yeah, Witcher season yep. 2 images? Yeah, there's a bunch of these. I think the one that most people have seen is the Henry 
cable one, but there was a and Jennifer image out there, and there's a Siri image, which is the least seen, I think, of all three of them. Um, this is just really an excuse for me to say, uh, uh, Henry Cavill's armor. Uh, uh, yeah. and that's, that's all I needed to say. I'm looking it up right now because I haven't seen it yet. It's, um... Uh, <laughs> uh whoa. <laughs> yeah. I need to finish that show. Wait, yeah, you man. never finished the first season? Oh, oh my I god. Like four or five episodes oh. and it just fell off what do you oh, for fair, no reason. That is a lot farther than I might have expected you to say like a year ago or so. I might have expected you to be like, I got in 10 minutes and I was like, no thanks. So, yeah. Oh, um, man. No, I loved it. Like immediately, I was like, "Oh," because it was right after Game of Thrones ended. I was like, "Oh, you're just you're mm-hmm. such a a beautiful little creature." Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was nice. It was it was nice to see fantasy uh, written well. Um, that was that was fun. That was a fun little experience. In the before um, time when we all had hope. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In the before four time, <laughs> before the D and D. Well. <laughs> That and just, I don't know, it's the first season of The Witcher, it was done so well because you didn't really have a grasp on the timeline until you were like probably about six episodes in, maybe seven, because that's when things really mm-hmm. kind of started to coalesce and you're like, oh, okay, now this makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, all, it was it all phenomenal. Fit together. Yeah. It's, it's like a watching Dunkirk, but a far more satisfying at the very beginning. Uh. Um, (laughs) I just had to throw a little jab in there at Dunkirk. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's all I haven't seen that either. Oh, you know what? Fine. That's (laughs) (laughs) ringing endorsement of Dunkirk. It's, you know, it's, it's pretty to look at. Um, yeah. Christopher Nolan. It's a good movie, but at the same time, it's like Christopher Nolan just, just, it's yeah. it's like him masturbating on screen. Um, it's it really is. It's just like oh, oh, oh so Chris. a Christopher Nolan movie. That's what you mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like <laughs> we get it, Chris. You like airplanes. I, I like airplanes <laughs> too. You don't need to show me this much time of just airplanes. Um, we get it, anyways. Chris. You have the interest of a six-year-old boy. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. It's it's kind of. I amazing. bought this World War II bummer th- so I could blow it up. Mm-hmm. So I could cut pieces off of it and attach an IMAX camera that causes it to tilt to one side. <laughs> because <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I can do what I want. Um, anyways, <laughs> uh, on to our uh, main stories, which I could have called this a DC section, but uh, I don't know. It's just three stories. Um, Super Supergirl ending, ending at season yeah. six, which is both expected and slightly surprising. Yeah, mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't realize it was on for six seasons. <laughs> that's that's insane. I mean, good for that show, but that mm-hmm. just seems crazy to me. Wait, that, that show's still that long. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> it hasn't ended yet. <laughs> It's just Jesus. It's so funny to think like three years ago we would have been all on top of this. Now it's like, oh, huh, that's still on the air. Yeah. Isn't that something? Um, I've been starting to pay attention to that section of TV again because uh, the guy Pagey on YouTube has all these like updates and kind of you know mm. rumors and bits of information for all the shows going forward. Um, Never nothing. again. <laughs> I I am good for the rest of my life. Uh, I think it's like uh, with like, crisis. You could walk away from it and go like, "That was fun." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah that, no, that's why I haven't not, watched a single minute of it since. Here's the thing. <laughs> Just, I, I'm okay with crisis being the last DCCW thing I ever watch. Honestly, mm-hmm. I yeah. didn't even watch it, and I'm good with that. Um, well, you're wrong. It's good. So, but yeah. it's really fun. Uh, um, uh, no, no, it's you, not, you are. You watch um. Did you watch Crisis on Earth X with us? Yeah, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Okay. That was a good time. Yes, but I was I was really also fun. having Stockholm syndrome at that point. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I really like this. It's really good. Yeah, but I I think Earth X is in a vacuum really fun. I think it's mm-hmm. awesome. Um, uh, Crisis is fun for like the polar opposite reason, where instead of like giving you these ridiculous church brawls, they're like, 
we're gonna have three flashes on screen at some point in this show stick around i, I yeah, think a lot of that i don't know i think maybe it's just that i never cared that much about the characters to begin with in i mean the tv mm. versions of them like mm. some of the shows yeah i like bits and pieces of but just all in all i was like eh, eh, after yeah, a while yeah, it is weird to set up your justice league in this little show universe and then have one of the founding members suddenly have her show end yeah, yeah, well, but I feel like they've been telegraphing this for a very long time. You know, when we were still very much in this, like saying that they're gonna do a Superman show, and it's like, what's the point of that if you have Supergirl already? Unless, unless you know something that we don't know already. Well, um, um, I don't. I just know that the Superman show is gonna be basically like it's gonna be him and his, it's gonna be about like them as parents yeah. with two kids who mm -hmm. are you know fucking super powered you know um, the cw writer who listens to this show is like just super yes. disappointed all of us yeah well mm -hmm. um yeah. he's just like sitting there with an empty notepad like you mother sorry carl um, <laughs> um <laughs> but <laughs> melissa benoist is also trying to get pregnant too i think, oh, I I think they had the oh. kid already i think that that already happened actually i think the kid okay yeah then yeah. she wants to go you know focus on being a mom Good for her. yeah she wants to raise her child well and uh have it see it grow up and and do things and, and uh, what she means she doesn't her. want to tape 22 episodes a season what what, mm -hmm. what? Uh, mm -hmm. yes. she doesn't want to spend most of her life sitting on a set thinking about yeah. how she could be raising her kid right now um also the ruby rose departure like that entire like uh like character relationship is just in the garbage <laughs> Jesus Christ. i i totally forgot about that yeah yeah that that probably doesn't help anything it's i don't know it also feels like the cw verse quote unquote might be flailing a little bit with hbo max the 100 pound gorilla just kind of looking over its shoulder like I think the, the problem there is that like they have star girl mm -hmm. and star girl is apparently really fucking good yeah um it's first of all i watched one scene and that one scene was more expensive than any was of it, the big like was it the solomon grundy shit shop in the flash huh the solomon grundy shit uh yeah but it was like mm -hmm. it's a simple fight scene that was filmed really well with lots of like like, like really convincing destruction um uh good choreography but it didn't look as cheap um star girls also come to the cw so i don't know like why yeah i don't know i think that's part of the problem is no one knows the fuck they're doing mm -hmm. I, I well think yeah the lines are gonna blur a little bit more going forward um i mean that's just pure speculation on my part but i i get the feeling that there's gonna be a point where one of these new shows that is in the cw verse is just gonna air exclusively on hbo max and we'll get announcements like this show is just moving there uh, and this other show is also moving there and the our x show the flash is canceled but a new show taking the flash's place is moving to hbo like i feel like that's inevitable uh look at the swamp thing mm -hmm. uh like yeah. scenario where it aired on dc universe they canceled it and now they're hyping it up to air the whole season on cw mm -hmm. as if it's a new show yep it's so yeah. stupid. Like, why? I don't get it. Why? Just if you're gonna do it, just make a new season. Well, I mean, you can't expect them to be like, "Well, here's Swamp Thing," I guess. <laughs> like, it, it's, it's they need to act like it's something <laughs> exciting so they can get ratings. And I mean, this. I mean, that's what I did the first time. So why should we expect anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, it was on DC Universe, so uh, yeah. that's right. Came exactly. Out like how many zeros? I Fuck mean, this. Yeah, in their defense, they're putting it on one of the only networks that you can watch for free without a cable subscription for everybody True. on yeah. Earth to watch. Um, yeah. So like, it's it's kind of cool that they're doing it and that they're putting advertisement behind it. Um, it's it's very interesting though it tells you something about how none of these people at these companies talk to each other nope nope at all it seem uh they don't even uh, bother to read each other's emails that i feel yeah. like that's what this all tells us where they talk I, about making batman super into crossfit <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's I don't know i i also wonder if swamp thing getting put onto cw proper is 
a way for them to test if like well maybe we could do a second season of this if it does well enough oh yeah like yeah, I, I i don't yeah. see that being outside the realm of possibility with the way executive mm-hmm. minds work i feel like that that has to be somewhere so somebody is thinking that because again this is why them canceling it made no sense because enough of the pieces were lining up that it's like there's no reason to not give this at least a second season to like find its legs at the very least. Um, even with all the weird budget fracas that we saw at the, at the time where that show was canceled. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, well, ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. 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 I don't know. It, it just, I feel like CW, like they're, they're, dc universe stuff is kind of a dying thing for them right now like maybe i'm wrong just because i'm so far removed from it but it just i think covid also did this you know do everything else sucked the momentum out of it because crisis just wrapped up and they're like everyone's rolling through like you know the post-crisis stuff mm-hmm. and wrap up their seasons and then suddenly like flash and super were like yeah that's it no season finale we're done yeah yeah well, i mean yeah the, the covid stuff definitely didn't help there it's, um yeah but I mean, with I, Arrow like mm-hmm. being done, and now Supergirl being done, and <laughs> Batwoman being <laughs> gone, like which yeah, right, that's coming back ever. Bullshit. Um, it uh, it is. They have a new actress. I, I think so we'll, we'll, something's underway. We'll see how that goes. We'll um, see. I give it. We'll give it a season. I'm thinking that's going to be about it. Um, but I just, I just don't see what's the point of trying to continue the way they're doing things. Like... Um, so the problem is, I think once Flash ends, mm-hmm. that universe is yeah. Yes, I I agree. Like Flash is kind of the spine at this point. Um, I think to the wide to like a very wide audience, right, Eric? You are correct. Like this show and these shows, I think that they're not going to appeal to as broad of an audience as they have in the past, just because of the nature of how many shows that they have. The fact that they sort of main show that launched it all is kind of dead um it's not it's gonna flail a little bit but these shows have been a success like there's a reason that batgirl or batwoman god fucking damn it um <laughs> the, <laughs> somewhere Sexist. blue is screaming um <laughs> but there's a reason that that show was in the advertising for hbo max and that it launched digitally on hbo max because these do, shows do actually do really well in the long run and on cw that's why uh a couple years ago netflix signed that exclusivity deal that still hasn't expired yet um which covered everything until batwoman which they immediately put on max somebody is somebody's mic not coming through Correctly, because I, I'm getting a, like some feedback from somebody. yeah, yeah. Somebody sounding like not robotic, but like they're coming from like the nth dimension or something along those mm-hmm. lines. Is it yeah. you, Hunter? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, just uh, just really just giving yourself away yeah. there. Um, just... but yeah, like, uh, but Eric, I do see what you mean. Like, I think the show's are probably dropping steadily, but I don't pay attention to them the same way that I did when we were covering them. <laughs> like yeah, I mean, my level of interest in the behind the scenes stuff just I mean, isn't isn't Legends of Tomorrow ending somewhere soon, or am I incorrect in that? Or are they I mean I feel uh, like that show's been I... ending for like five years, but well, yes, yeah, I think yeah, you're, good, good I think point. you're correct. Yeah. yeah, it just I don't know. It 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 seems like crisis would have been the natural end point for the shows like that should have been what they were aiming for and been like all right goodbye like once they finished all of that sure i mean i know that you're coming from from like the point of view of not caring all that much but i do want to point out that um you know like there was a podcast i was i still listen to um that said something very similar to what you're saying right now about the marvel movie where after Endgame, they were like, okay, well, this is it, right? They're not doing any more movies. And then the one of them who's like a uh-huh. entertainment reporter is like, yeah, no, they're still going to make these. Um, they're still going to do them. And when they reviewed Spider-Man Far From Home, their big problem was like, why do we need 
this. The story is over. Yeah, uh, but that's apples it, and oranges. Like movies. Well, are I very... would argue that they're not that. Far I would from argue each other. that you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's a one for one, Eric. But like, <laughs> you can't just ignore the fact that it depends on how much you care about these things. That is the, well, plays a major part in this. How much you actually care is going to affect. Um, whether or not you think that more of these shows... How much I care is going to affect how many billions of dollars that one of these things makes? Yeah, (laughs) sure. Fucking Far From Home made billions of dollars. Like, Yeah. I mean, these shows do well. Like, that's the reason that they're... How many did we get eventually? Seven? Like, that's not nothing. You know, also, you don't do six seasons just, like, mm-hmm. by luck. You like, don't save a show that there. CBS canceled because you're like, that wasn't successful at all. And there's no value in that whatsoever. I just, um, I don't know. I, I think it's that it's super cheap it, in a grander I mean, scheme yes. for them to pump <laughs> these things out. And that's why they can do 22 episodes. And it's more about just beating people down with the shows than it is by actual quality. <laughs> I think that's a nature of the network that they're on more than anything. I've said before, if they could do 12 episodes, I bet that they would. But I don't think anybody truly wanted to for a while. And it's also, we've talked about this before, it's a union thing. Uh, how much you get paid doesn't change based on a smaller season. If you do, if you work for 10 episodes or if you work three episodes out of 10, you get paid the same as you might work for three episodes out of 22. Um, at least that was how things were for a while there. So it, um, it's them abusing the talent is what's going on. there. Basically. Yes. Yeah. Well, specifically in the, on the writing side of thing, but yes, just everybody involved. Uh, it, it's really like, keeping as many people afloat as you can (laughs) while just sucking them dry for ideas and work. So you end up with three of the shows producing episodes that are the exact same thing in a given week. I'm sorry. What was that? What was that Moss man? There's a a fucking B lady. What? (laughs) It sounded right, well, like no, I was... someone who was speaking through moss is what Hunter was. <laughs> I was thinking of the episode of Supergirl in the episode of Arrow where there were competing vigilantes who were too rough um, in both shows, like one night after the other. Yeah, my uh, balls. Yeah, no, no, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, that's, that, that's exactly why I think these shows need to be ridiculously restructured like it just it yeah. as someone who would like watch these yeah. shows if they would actually put the time and money into improving the quality and cutting down the amount like it just it doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense to me and that's why that's why the mm-hmm. argument that like there's still a huge audience for it after crisis just seems bizarre to me it just it seems absolutely bizarre to me because you don't ever hear warner brothers saying like oh and the viewership on on Legends of Tomorrow it's uh, through the roof. Same thing with this and that and the other thing. Like it just like you can you can hear how well a Marvel movie does, or even in some cases mm-hmm. a DC film does. But like you never hear anybody bragging about like however well, whatever the numbers yes. are for their for their WB universe. At Warner's they don't say that. At, again, like at CW they do they do say these things. They talk about how proud they are that they've had shows on for you know nearly ten years. I mean, again, this is the same network that made Supernatural like a fifteen year long show. Yeah, that's um, not a good thing. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a good thing, Eric. I'm saying you have to acknowledge who you're talking about. <laughs> you're talking about maniacs who are like. Yeah, we'll keep it on fair. ten years longer than it should be. Um, yeah, this is uh, this this is the channel that like thrives on that obsessive fan base shit. Like, yeah, that's that's the only reason that I think the CW exists. Like it, it exists because they want shows that will keep just people watching over and over again, and they don't really care as much about quality, which I think is the reason why. They will eventually die at some point because it's like you can only do that for so long. You can only, you know, cater I need to, the to have it happen in my lifetime. 
<laughs> I can't. Well, and like, look at how look at how their strategy changed too. Like Arrow was conceived, and you can go back and find Ash to 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 line this up. But like Arrow was conceived and sold as some like weirdo, like tween fetishist Twilight knockoff. Like Ugh. it's just like, hey, here's Robbie Amell in a fucking shirtless outfit in the in the like this random page of a Gabe Informer Arrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was very much um, like they adapted and like the shows got better. Um, mm-hmm. but like now, um, I don't yeah. know what you do to like kind of, I guess, inject more interest and make everything just a little better. I don't, I don't think you can, which is why I do think that moving to HBO makes the most sense. Um, because it's a, it's just a better market for what they've established. Like, I don't know how you convince somebody who's never watched The Flash up until this point to just start with the new season you outside can't. of binging everything that <laughs> came before. No, you can't. You absolutely can't. It would be insane. Um, <laughs> like, I I would go mental. I mean, I, I think I have uh, just a little bit. Imagine starting with season four. That's... God. It, well, wait. Which one was season four? Was that the one that? Well, I no, came Eric in on? did start at season yeah. four. But I also, yeah. I also had like a working knowledge of the comic, so I, mm-hmm. I'm a little bit of an anomaly. But like, if you expect the general person who's like, oh, I kind of like the Flash from, I don't know, what, the cartoons or like the bits in the movie. Yeah. That, there are people like, that really like that '90s show where it's like that's their only reference as well. Yeah, so like, but yeah. I mean, it's it it's not viewer like new viewer friendly like it's at this point now yeah and yeah. i imagine the age range is dropping off more and more like until it's just people who host podcasts who watch these shows mm-hmm. right yeah people who people who you know commit to a bit and then they don't let other people leave that bit for far too long yeah hey <laughs> um uh, we can move on <laughs> I mean, we're we're like a lateral moving on because it's the same pile of I, shit. I would <laughs> say well, it's well, it's adjacent. Well, um, yeah, this is something we knew was happening. The real like injection of newness here is Seth Graham Smith. Um, who are we all familiar with him, even vaguely? Or I know the is name, name, but I can't think of what he's been involved in. Well, I, th- I think the biggest thing we would all know is pretty sure he wrote it part one. Uh, okay. I think okay. that's his, like, if I had to say that's the biggest thing where I'm like, yeah, Seth Graham Smith, uh, it part one is definitely him. He either, I don't know if he wrote the final script or if he's just a credited person or not. I know he's a producer on both of the it's. Um, he's written a lot of stuff. He has his name on the Beetlejuice 2, which, oh. okay. okay. Okay, he he wrote the uh, the books Pride and Prejudice and Zombies and yes. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Okay. Mm-hmm. I right. realized he, he was that guy. On the films. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, He's it's... producing an Eyes of the Dragon series, which... Um, For HBO Max, I'm guessing. I I would assume... I would hope no. maybe CBS all um, access. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Like uh, Green Lantern, though, I feel like with this being uniquely like an HBO Max show, there's mm-hmm. going to be a larger amount of money behind it, and I think there's going to be a bit more like, let's not do twenty two episodes. <laughs> like that, I think that they'll do twenty two episodes. I, I don't. I don't think that they would. Would be like thirteen. Well, yeah. Here's the episodes. thing. Seth Graham Smith feels like, because I think, I mean, I'm looking at him right now. I don't know if he's, he does seem to be working in TV more. Actually, I feel like that's where he's gotten most of his success. So I think that's why he's, I guess, more of a premium in terms of like his television experience and his credits. Um, And then Mark Guggenheim, I feel like putting him on here is like, all right, this is your actual redemption for Green Lantern in the film. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna let you fix your mistakes. Uh, because I feel like that's the only reason you have him, other than his credits from all the CW stuff. Uh, so this oh. will be interesting. I don't know how much of a CW show this is gonna be, or if they're just gonna do this like a movie, uh, just a very long movie. That I mean, that would be my 
personal preference. It's just a very long movie. Uh, ten parts is what they're saying. Uh, that doesn't okay. really mean anything, but ten parts could be ten hours. It could be five hours. Who knows? Depending on how long the episodes are. Uh, it just, yeah, like but I they're said, saying that's... a lot of Green Lanterns in this. Yeah. And as long as it's not 22 episodes, I will gladly watch it. Um, and, uh, I mean, that's uh, David Ramsey, who played Diggle, mm-hmm. uh, was asked about this recently in like a little online panel. He said, news is coming regarding him and Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll see. We'll yeah, I mean, see. I am kind of surprised they don't have Hal in it, but I'm wondering if that means they have bigger plans for Hal Jordan coming up. Because, I mean, Alan Scott is a known... Green Lantern, same thing with Boz, and I forget. Uh, mm-hmm. Hal Jordan might be a poison well at this point for that company. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Just from a live action perspective, like mm-hmm. Hollywood's weird, and like when something fails once, they're like, "That's it. It can never work again. You can't have your movie called From Mars. What are you doing?" Well, it's. Uh, I mean, they're doing another Dune movie, so you know, because the Lynch Dune. Sure, is but that took them forty years. So. Well, like... you know, still, it's. I don't know. I. <laughs> if it just it seems weird to me that they were they'd be willing to go down that hard on the idea of never doing Hal Jordan ever because of a bad choice they made under different management. I mean, would it shock you though? No, it wouldn't shock me, but mm-hmm. I, I feel like HBO Max is kind of becoming like the Lazarus pit for them for a lot of stuff that mm-hmm. you're seeing that like, oh hey, we can <laughs> we can actually have stuff come back to life on this and it'll actually be decent. Like, I mean, maybe, dip it in the waters of premium. Exactly. It might be that thing that I said a couple up or a few episodes back where it's like, are they just like going through bad decisions previously executives made and being like, hey, uh, do the opposite of that, do yeah. it again, but just yeah. do. Do the good version. Just, just don't mess it up this time. Um, yeah. Don't, don't listen to up. Jeff Johns. Mm-hmm. Oh God, no! Don't try and listen to uh, commands that are coming to you from the top of a roller coaster. Mm-hmm. Like just mm-hmm. it. No, no, no. By a man who's uh, Eskimo <laughs> brothers with the director of Hellboy. Oh, God. Um, God damn it. <laughs> Marshall. Um, yeah, it just like the fact that they've thrown Doom Patrol on there and they're just like, hey, we're doing a second season. Like, it's, yeah. it obviously did pretty well for them on HBO Max. That's my guess. Mm-hmm. But you don't see Titans getting thrown um, on there. I, <laughs> no, and that's the, weird, that's the one I think everyone's like, so what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Um, mm. Personally, I don't care because I think Titans is cringy. Um, but Harley Quinn and Doom and Doom Patrol are definitely the runaway hits, and mm-hmm. Harley Quinn getting a third season makes me so fucking happy. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice to hear that. Um, that, that show is going to be that, I think, that little section of that streaming service's runaway hit. That show was really good, mm-hmm. um, and the second season made, like, a shit ton of positive waves. Um, and I think if you sustain that, that could be, you know, kind of a, a go-to show for a while. I mean, I feel like it kind of... Um... It overshadowed the movie in, in a weird way. Uh, yeah. yeah, it does. <laughs> Although, um, in to be yeah. old man here, um, I also feel like it's never going to potentially be as successful as something that's live action. I, that's just that's yeah just the way. Unfortunately, it seems mm-hmm. that Hollywood works. Like it, it wouldn't matter if this could be Oscar quality. Like, not that anybody has whatever varying opinions on oscars whatever it could be award-winning worthy stuff but it's still never going to be seen in the same light by some people because it's animated i, I get what you mean because like I prepared an essay for you about joker okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. 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 the joker i mean sort of in, in support of what you're saying eric like considering how good the heights of the Tim of uh, the Bruce Tim Paul Dini verse got, mm-hmm. um, which were pretty high, and then you look at the requisite amount of um, support and praise that that show got outside of like the people who were immediately handling it, yeah. um, and and like the way in which that stuff created the current generation of like casual DC fans, like I. I don't think DC Comics is in nearly as good of a place as it is without those shows. Oh, one hundred percent. Don't. Um, and the way in which it kept that brand alive, um, 
versus how the company has just completely ignored most of that stuff. Yep. Um, just utterly ignored it. Like when they're making their movies, they don't even say, well, this animated universe, which is the oldest DC universe that they have that technically is still running. The other than the comics, it's the oldest version of these characters that people know and have an emotional attachment to. It's just completely ignored. They're just yep. like, well, you know, we'll hire this guy who did this Watchmen movie and he'll do his version of Superman. We won't look at this very successful version of Superman that's existed for 30 years by that point. Or no, 20 years by that point. I, time, guys. Time is weird. Um, we're just going to completely ignore this version that, again, people have grown up with. This mm -hmm. Just completely throw it away for no good reason, I would argue. I, uh, I would even argue that actually a lot of those cartoons created current comic readers. Because I know in, like, the one uh, Omnibus group I'm in, people will talk about, like, you know, I grew up watching this, and that's how I got into, like, Batman or Superman or even the Justice League. So it's, it, I completely get where you're coming from, Arlen. Like, it just, it seems like a insane misstep for them to not be actually respecting that stuff. But it once again goes back to, I think, the way executives think. And it's just like, yeah, it's really good, but... But they don't have real tits. I need yeah. the real tits on mm -hmm. screen. And I, <laughs> and I think my... <laughs> this is all looping around to say I don't think they're going to suddenly change and become uh, very uh, appreciative of what they have now. Um, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong, you know? Um, but, like, Batman had to sell, like, billions of dollars in video games for them to even kind of approach caring about something tangentially related to the Timbers. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's a thing that happened. Green Lantern, which is what we're actually trying to talk about. Um, I don't know, did anybody else? I feel bad for this whole thing. Yeah. Because, uh, this movie has been, uh, struck from its potential release date is now just up in the air, but Aldous Hodge, mm -hmm. uh, has been cast as Hawkman in Black Adam. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, the only thing I saw around this was lots of shitty Facebook comments from people who were like, Ugh, why is he black? I'm glad I didn't see any of that, because I would have heard all of that. I'm like, well, because he's Egyptian. And, he's fucking and he uses alien technology and reincarnates every time he dies, so why wouldn't he be black at some point? He's basically also, Dr. he's Real. alien. Are we forgetting yes. that he's a fucking alien? It doesn't oh. Uh, well, it's... it depends on which version of him you're talking about, because there's been multiple versions of Hawk. Anyways, yeah, no, it's I get fucking, it. I get it. It's an adaptation of a fucking comic. I hate people. It so doesn't much. fucking matter, honestly. Yeah, it's fiction. Who cares? Yeah, kind of like he a. He could be a... fucking purple. Who cares? Yeah, he's an alien. That's fine. That's not the stretching point, okay? But he's black. Yeah. Nope. What do you mean? Not my Hawk, man. Because people cared yeah. that much about yeah. Hawkman before. <laughs> right. But he's like, given wait. a shit about Hawkman in years. People care about Hawkman? Really? I, I, I'm flabbergasted. He has, he has fucking wings and uses a mace. He can be black, okay? Well, <laughs> it's... Hawkman uh... has always been that character that, like, if there's people who know who he is, then they see him, like, as a throwaway character in the background of an episode of, like, I don't know, Smallville or something like that. They're like, oh, shit, it's Hawkman. And that's so the extent. To... Also, Eric, you just said Smallville, so Alan is going to sneak up behind uh, you later no, tonight. No, um, no. Please no. To crystallize that Please point, no. Um, in the Injustice comic, there's a point where Hawkman is hyped to show up. And he shows up, he gets one good shot on Superman, and Superman immediately murders him. <laughs> well, that's... Oh, so, okay, so, yeah, it was Injustice. Okay, cool. <laughs> that's that's basically everything in Injustice. It's like, oh, they're gonna beat this guy? No, he's dead. Then they died. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited to see Hawkman in any capacity that he's treated as more than a, hey, look, what's that thing in the background? It has wings. Oh, I guess that's Hawkman. <laughs> Like that's right. that's the extent of his appearances, it seems. Yeah. I so agree. let's hope that he has he fares better than his CW counterpart, who spent most of his initial run getting stabbed. <laughs> oh, he, yeah. What? Wait, was he on Flash or was he on what else was he on? He was uh, on Legends tomorrow. Tomorrow, Eric. 
I didn't see that season. I don't know. I I jumped in at the what second or third one? I think it was the third one. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, and then he shows up with Hawk Girl. Mm -hmm. They're a big deal, guys. And then he's just you know indisposed for a while. He comes back. He dies again. Mm. Uh, <laughs> no, they keep on killing him because he keeps on coming back in different ways, doesn't he? He's like, yeah, because we keep seeing different years of him. We Excuse see me. different like. That's that's not counting on the flashbacks where he's murdered, mm -hmm. um, and then like I think in the like he's a third resurrection in the present day, and he's stabbed again. Oh, yeah, he had it coming. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, because he's hawk, he's hawk man. Because yeah, he's uh, white. Um, yeah, um, but anyways, like in the actual news part of this, uh, Aldous Hodge is a good casting for just about anything. Um, what else was he in? Uh, I mean, most recently people would know him from Invisible Man. Um, oh, is, oh, uh, okay. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. Um, he is the friend who uh, Elizabeth Moss goes to live yeah, he's with. He's the cop. And... Yeah. Um, yeah. I was trying not to say it that way because of uh, current feelings. No, in that's, the world. I, no. He <laughs> plays a cop in a movie. That's not. I same. know. I know. Um, but yes, uh, he that that is his role in the movie. He is the cop who's like disbelieving of the fact that there is an, in, an invisible man um speaking of connor have you redeemed that goddamn code that i fucking sent you uh probably not considering that i forgot about it until this very moment <laughs> uh, his God repeats it. itself. that was i think that was your exact same response when he asked you last time <laughs> I, it just popped up to me i was like I sent him a code for maybe a free movie, and he hasn't even tried. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I just want to know if it works now. That's my main curiosity. It, well, there. It, only one way to find out, Connor. <laughs> it probably still does. I had stuff that was from, like, 2016 that still worked when I was transferring yeah, everything. Those things have long life well, on them. Well, they sometimes do, but, other like, it'll say, like, it's only good for, like, a year, and then it's, like, mm -hmm. five years later, they're like, all right, whatever, it's fine. Well, yeah, because <laughs> you'll look it up, and they'll be like, we extended uh, this code for six years. It's like, all right. <laughs> okay, then. <laughs> really want you to use it. Yeah. Probably because um, they thought no one redeemed it. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because if they're just sitting there, I, I, I'm guessing that there's some... Some reason that they want those out of the system. Oh, um, like, yeah. They have memos somewhere in, like, uh, ex every executive, like, emails. Like, this one dude in Las Vegas won't redeem the code. I wonder what the <laughs> Well, <laughs> sitting on all these codes. To, what is he doing with them? To be conspiratorial with, uh, with digital codes, too, I think the reason why they do that is because when they decide to eventually take them off of whatever services, they'll then force you to have to buy it again when they re-release it. It's very no, I thought you, you were going. I thought you were going like Q level. There's fucking lizard people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. The digital well, come JFK, on, come all, all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, yeah, JFK uh, Jr. is the Baron of digital codes. So when he comes into <laughs> power yeah. again in November seventh, I think is what the story. Oh, mm -hmm. I hate that. Yeah. I hate that theory so much. Mm -hmm. I hate it. You'll take yeah. away your ability to watch Bram Stoker's Dracula at three a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So we kind of already talked about the MCU uh, release date changes. Um, uh, yes, well, kind of. Kind of. Um, I mean, it's the interesting thing is that they're releasing six movies next year, so make things yeah. work out. Um, that's pretty. <laughs> Spoiler: It probably won't. Um, nope. Yeah. Um, but one division still coming out yes. next month. I yes. Think. Mm -hmm. But it, I want. Yeah. Uh, in the hypothetical world where they do get these movies out. Um, that will be very, very interesting. Um, we're going to see a lot of progress in the MCU very, very fast. So I'm curious to see how that would work out. Uh, we, we get an entire phase in like six months. Seriously. <laughs> well, I'm just, I, I want them, I don't care about any of these other movies. I just want them to finish Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. I just they need to finish filming oh that. Yeah. So I need it. I need it. Yeah, the shows are really the shows are kind of where I care more, honestly. Um, that and the space stuff. I've yeah. said we've talked a lot in the various chats because we haven't done a new show in a while. We haven't actually got a lot of news about any of the space stuff. Well, which is I kinda, where they said that they were moving to. Um, I kind of wonder if they were scrambling to fix that. 
And then they're finally like, all right, we need to hire James Gunn back because we fucked up. So I wonder if some of that's on the back burner because they're working with him again on all of that. Yeah. Like, I don't, it was never really talked about, like, when he was rehired, if he was put back into the same position that they were hyping him up as. Well, and then, mm-hmm, go ahead. I'm sure the Suicide Squad kind of put a damper on a lot of that. Where it's like, oh, we have to wait till we finish up this other commitment yeah. so we can come back and fix our shit. True, true. Because <clears throat> I could see, like, using Guardians 3 as kind of a, the launching point for a larger, like, cosmic thing. Because yeah. I think I think Eternals is going to introduce an aspect of the cosmic world, but I don't think it's going to be their, their jumping off point for it. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think they need to do um, something familiar before they really decide to dive whole hog into the idea of a nihilist and all that other stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that's all we really need to... I mean, Connor, I didn't hear it from you. Did you have, like, a thought about them all coming out next I mean, year? I'm the same with Zarek. Like, I need fucking Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Right now. Yeah, yeah the, the, again, like, that's the stuff where I'm really paying attention too like i want to know what's going on with sam uh and all that stuff so if only if only there was some other tv show i was excited about yeah mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, if only. yeah some other be... some other character that's been talked about on the show a lot mm-hmm. yeah. well yeah. being that that show was uh, under, was just talked about and had... that show might be dead. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, it, it might be a deader than Conchu at this point. It it's gonna be a bit before I think they can jump oh. back into that. Yeah, okay. I'm secretly like, funding the movie. Project that were, <laughs> any project that were paper before all this really intensified, I think you're in real trouble. Like they keep telling me there's gonna be a flash movie and they keep saying things like, I got two Batman. Well, and I'm like, the thing. Not gonna it's, make a, this movie. it's a fucking it's it's a MCU thing though. <laughs> like at this yeah. point. Mm-hmm. Like is, is anything a sure bet? <laughs> well, on the opposite end, though, I don't think there's been a single thing they said they're going to do that they haven't. It might have taken them longer to do, but yeah, well, technically, mm-hmm. Inhumans got made. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a good point. But that was that was before that was before Kevin ascended. So it, yeah, mm-hmm. right before like, the Great Subway Wars. <laughs> Yeah, like, I don't, before I don't, him and Ike had their final final battle, um, uh, and then they out. they crucified Ike with pencil stubs. Um, mm-hmm. Like I I don't think they would on two giant uh, horizontal and vertical sandwiches. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, and then uh, and then she caught his blood after stabbing him in the side with a sharpened spork. Um, like I don't think you you announce someone like uh, Marshala Ali being no. in Blade and then are like. Oops, our bad. Like I think it's not happening. No, it's yeah. that it's not gonna happen. Like Yeah. So I think have faith, but yeah, it's gonna take a little while for that to even yeah. even touch the ground at this point because they've got so many other things on the table already. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well uh, so let's move on to two stories that I'm I'm just gonna say them both because they have to be connected. In some mm-hmm. way, I mean, they they are connected. They very much are connected. It's all it's connected. All right. Um, but in these two in particular, so the first, the one that came out first, um, to everybody's shock, is that an accurate word? Um, yeah. J- Jamie Fox is returning as Electro. Let's just let's just sit on that for a second. What the fuck? This. It, mm-hmm. Okay. Just okay. just just let it sit. Now this, now this other news, which came a little bit afterwards, Benedict Cumberbatch is going to be sort of taking over the mentor role uh, from Tony Stark in Spider-Man Three. I, um, I didn't read it as that when I read the art. Well, the one of the articles about it, I read it that they're just saying that Doctor Strange is going to be in Spider-Man Three. Mm-hmm. That that's also the story, but the the Collider article, and this might just be the writer. This might just be Jeff Snyder. You know, throwing stuff out there, but they are saying adds Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange in mentor role, um, and that's where my mind probably would have gone anyway. Seeing as he is kind of the Tony Avatar, I guess going forward. 
See, um, I I think it's a misnomer to say like just because he's an older man than Peter that he's automatically the mentor. Like, it, I don't know. I see it more as just Doctor Strange is there because there's a mess that needs to be cleaned up and it's magically involved. And Eric, I just I'm not. I'm not saying that that's for sure. I'm just saying, like, all right, I, I can see that. Also, in my head, I and I'm very much see Strange as as being a Tony-like character in general. Like, I see him being I, the... None of this matters, because the new villain's gonna have dubstep. Right, exactly. <laughs> okay, right. yes. On, that, on the point of Jamie Foxx returning, I have way more faith in Kevin Feige than I do mm-hmm. anyone at Sony. Yeah. So maybe they'll do it right. I don't think no, that I they could, allow this unless somebody right. has a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's. Yeah, I just. I don't know. I, I. I think it would be a bad idea to put Doctor Strange in the mentor role because it would just be redoing uh, Homecoming again, essentially, I, I except agree. with, with yes. magic. So I think. I think that's just why it's just a terrible idea to even I even think- entertain that thought. Sure. I think Spider Man. I think Spider Man should be the mentor. <laughs> I think. Uh, I sure he should be mentoring. Well, uh, yeah. That, I mean, that actually kind of works more because Doctor Strange. I don't really think of him as a, like a, a capital H hero in quite the same way no. that I think of the rest of the extended MCU world. Um, I think he's gonna have of, to be now. Yes, mm-hmm. now he will. But I don't think of him as like a public figure in the way that uh, Thor was established to be in Thor Ragnarok, um, or even you know Cap and Tony. Like th- those people, they get stopped on the street and asked for pictures and all that. Um, well, I mean that's that's not really that different than the little bit I've read of him in the comics. Like he's sure he's that guy who's doing the stuff behind the scenes that you don't want to mm-hmm. know about. Like yeah. Mm-hmm. So it would make. Yeah. Also, go ahead. Um, I was gonna say like we really have to address this Jamie Fox thing because, um, too specific to just be like yeah it's just you know different version yeah, no. no bullshit well no. Yeah, so. so again the, the reason I connected these two things is like it's gonna play into multiverse of madness and I've been yeah. again I've been saying this in the chats I feel like multiverse of madness is gonna be the new civil war in the sense that like a lot of spokes are going to depend on things established in that movie. Um, A lot of different directions are going to be forged or you're going to see how things would come out of it um, and how other movies would be affected by it. You know, it's it's crazy because like this open, like doing multiverse stuff, like pretty much, allows them carte blanche to do shit like bring Venom in and like Fantastic mm-hmm. Four and all this stuff. Yeah. It is it is the answer to what DC has uh, decided to do, which is say like no, we have a cinematic multiverse. Everything counts. Mm-hmm. And so I think just to you know, be smart and keep up with their competition, they're like, alright, we can do that too. Well, uh, but that's the thing. Like this is actually <laughs> this is actually has a structure to it. It's not just saying everything counts and walking away. Oh, here's the thing. This is going to be a planned multiverse where yeah. DC is like, how do we salvage this fucking disaster of continuity right. we have? Yeah. 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 Or, it's like or we don't. And I think this is going to be a way for, for Marvel as a studio to kind of go back and like recontextualize some shit from years ago. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe this is how the X-Men. Well, that's something. Um, sorry. Maybe have Nick Cage show up as Spider at some point. Maybe we can have fucking you know uh, mm. uh, Tom Jane show up as Punisher. Well, I had seen <laughs> something talking about how uh, a lot of the X Men movies are now up on Disney Plus, and uh, they're not listed as MCU movies. They're listed as like Marvel legacy films. Yeah. So it's, yeah. they're yeah. already figuring out ways to kind of just be like, no, that, that's not the same as MCU. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's a Marvel film, but not the same you, thing. You know what I'd love is if, like, in Multiverse of Madness, they find a skeleton, but it's wearing Ben Affleck's Daredevil costume. <laughs> <laughs> like, that'd be hilarious. It's like, it's like the Incredibles. Or it's just in a, like a behind a waterfall or whatever. <laughs> well, um, was this something one of you had posted in the chat, or maybe it was something I'd read somewhere? Um, there's 
and mind you, this might have been from one of the many garbage movie sites out there, but there's mm-hmm. a rumor floating around that uh, Tom Cruise might actually be showing up in Multiverse of Madness as an alternate universe Fire version of Iron, Iron Man. Man. Yes. <laughs> yes, what? because, no, Tom Cruise was in the running to play Iron Man when that first movie was supposed to be coming out. I feel like fucking bonkers. I want it to happen. Yeah. No, I think that happened because of the guy who's been doing like these alternate universe posters where it's like all of the people who almost got the role. Like it's John Krasinski as Cap. Um, and he's just been doing that for all of them. Uh, I feel like that's where this comes from. I don't, I don't know. This is the I, first I'm I hearing really, about I, what you're saying of Tom Cruise coming out of like a portal or something. And he's, he's Tony. Um, I, I, yes. No, I think it'd be the opposite. I think like Peter and Benedict and probably Wanda like step through a portal and they're like, the fuck? And like, there he is, like, suiting up the first time. You know, be Tom... if he has an Iron Man suit, but he's like still four feet tall. Dude <laughs> <laughs> really has lips inside of it. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is from various sites that are uh, <laughs> not exactly renowned, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Tom Cruise cameo is rumored to be under consideration for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. So here's the problem with this. He'll only do also, it... Also, Pedro Pascal has quit the exactly. Mandalorian because he wanted to show right. his face. Um, how will Tom Cruise be able to risk his life in some way um, while doing well, this cameo? He didn't, um, he didn't risk his life in, uh, in Tropic Thunder. Uh, true, true, yeah. but uh, that was much earlier on. <laughs> like, I told the production staff to increase the heat inside the fat suit by 200 degrees, right? What was that, Hunter? Um, more sweat. This, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's it's saying you know, it's unconfirmed rumors as of right now, but uh-huh. I could see them doing something like that. That's the thing. And at mm-hmm. this point, I think you'd be a fool, even if you only had a cameo to not show up in a Marvel movie. Like, yes, Deadpool sure. wasn't a Marvel film, but Brad mm-hmm. Pitt had that, like, five-second cameo. In I was going to say, yeah. like, well, yes. I Pitt advantage or changes things. Yes. Well, the Deadpool thing is, that was, like, a personal favorite thing. Yeah, because very, stunt was, guy. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he was good friends with the director. But st- I, I get your meaning, um, and I don't think that that's completely inaccurate. Like, I feel like the Marvel movies have reached a certain level of respect. And I, I don't think Tom Cruise would turn that down because, in all honesty, it couldn't hurt. No. Um, it, you know, it, it it wouldn't really, yeah. So, but uh, th- that could be something. We'll see. Um, I, I would actually like it if they did sort of acknowledge that other those other casting things again. The the John Krasinski almost getting cap thing has always fascinated me because um, I don't. I, I, that's a different world that's a truly different universe than the one we yeah. exist in now um, to me. <clears throat> Shit, I just lost my grandma. Oh, I thought you had oh, something yeah. very serious. <laughs> Imagine they step through a portal and, like, Terrence Howard is there. As- <laughs> no. <laughs> now that would no. be something. And then he's like, well, one plus one equals two. Uh, or no, or one times one equals two. Uh, <sighs> two plus two equals five. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, yeah. D- I guess on the uh, to circle around to the Jamie Foxx thing really quick. I'm assuming he signed on to this because they have a good idea. That's the other element. I don't think Foggy would say yes unless there was a good idea here, and I don't think Jamie Foxx would come back unless that they had a very good idea for how this would work. Um, and because yeah, like why would you? I I don't think that movie really hurt Jamie Foxx because he's Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Um, but if there was a thing <laughs> that maybe hurt him in anything recently, it was probably that movie. So if he's doing it, he really cares. He <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Um, and there's some aspect of it where he feels, I would assume he feels that he can get redemption for that character out of this in some way. So Who cares? It's Electro. <laughs> I, mean, I don't care, but he might care, Eric. He might really care. Um, to be fair, he he probably like had a like he probably was really excited to be in a Spider-Man movie or something right. along those lines, and then 
look what came out of that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I don't think Dane DeHaan went into that movie being like, I'm going to ruin the Green Goblin. (laughs) I'm going to be the worst Green Goblin ever. (laughs) Okay, hold up. Really quick. Did you see that shit where Robert Pattinson was like, I really enjoy the idea that I can ruin Batman. (laughs) (laughs) I like I like that. I love that so much. That's such a good quote. That's that's the way more actors need to approach these movies. It's like exactly. I could really ruin this if you wanted me to. Yeah. 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 I mean Clooney has the the, the opposite approach. He's like, Oh, I did ruin that. <laughs> it's been done. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Um that movie aged better than I think anybody ever thought it would. So that's a thing. Uh Man and Robin? Yeah, I would say it has. I uh, I feel like more people know, like that movie now great. than they did ten years ago. <laughs> so, yeah. Are, are we going to start uh, going down some prequels uh, apology tour here? Because I'm not standing <laughs> no, for I, it. You know what? Eric, guys, I, okay, I'm not saying me. I'm saying if you ask people in 2010 and you ask people now what they actually think of that movie, the number of people you'll have being like, "And I don't hate Batman and Robin," is going to be much higher than it was in 20. Because it's a dumb cartoon now. Yeah. And Arnold is like, yeah. Like every time he speaks, it's like $10 million is, you know, <sighs> fucking burning. Mm-hmm. And now Arnold yeah. hangs out inside his kitchen with a donkey and a mini horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't yeah. know, guys. Like, Uber Thurman is making some choices. I really and, love like, the Phantom All of a sudden, Menace. weirdness in that fucking movie. Mm-hmm. I, what was that, Hunter? I just really love the Phantom Menace. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are no women in space in that movie, really, at all. Yeah. There's no women in space. They're all on planets. Mm-hmm. And they get. I love my sleepy politics. Uh, mm-hmm. And my mm-hmm. very, very thinly veiled racism with the the Asians in the beginning. There are two of uh, them. I'm not doing that ever again. George Lucas thinking. <laughs> oh, you mean? Uh, oh, are you saying that you don't think the character of Watto was a sensitive, well thought out character, Connor? Is that what you're saying? Oh, not at all. No, he wasn't some kind of weird, He's... slight at uh, you know. Jewish people. It's not like it's not like George Lucas was reading old comic book strips depicting Jewish people looking exactly like that and being like, hmm. You know, I'm sure he was looking at original Flash Gordon comics and like, oh, well, Mimba Merciless seems like, like mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways. Anyways, yep. I, okay. I yeah. Yeah. Batman and Batman and Robin can suck my nuts. Um That's Eric. I'm not saying you're wrong. I think that's completely fine. That's if that's how you feel. Yeah. Um, that movie's hilarious. That movie is hilarious. I don't think it's good, but it's hilarious. Uh, oh, it's terrible, but it's really funny. Okay, so let's go on to something else. Since I feel like, I mean, unless there was something else that needed to be said about Doctor Strange and the Jamie Fox. Uh, uh, mm. Tom Cruise for Iron Man. Um, this yeah. next story, I don't, I, I don't lot about Ms. Marvel other than I like her in the yeah. Avengers game and and mm-hmm. I know what her basic origin is but that's about it mm-hmm. e, my exact sentence yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I, eh, I mean I'll I'm watch, for it I'm gonna watch this I'm gonna, like yeah. I'm not gonna not watch this but like cool um this girl hasn't done anything as far yeah. as I can tell she has no pre-existing career before this so completely fresh face she has that I she know killed she her audition. So, what was that? She has a letterbox account, and she doesn't care for Captain Marvel. That's all I know about her. <laughs> oh wow. Okay then. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, she's apparently a Canadian actress. Hello. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> I love the Again, house. like. We were talking about this before we actually started recording. I don't... There's not much to say about this one other than... Okay. Yeah. It's cool. It's happening. It's, I'm glad it's, it's happening. Still... I'll watch it. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. currently vapor, so investing in it currently is, you know, mm-hmm. tepid. Yeah. When they when they announce some other casting, like, uh, who's playing, I don't know, like a Super Skull or something like that or whatever. Although I don't think they'll be doing Super Scrolls. Um, but... Who knows? 
Um, oh, Jesus, that girl has graduated high school. <laughs> I'm just, I'm looking at her Wikipedia article right now and I'm shocked because she looks like a 13 year old. <laughs> yeah, she has real, she has a real Madani thing going on where it's like, wait, how yeah, old is kid she? Face. Yeah. Um, so that's, hmm. Do we Shocked. want to move on? Does, does anybody yes. really need to talk about that really one? Getting its own Disney Plus show, and it's probably going to be about Sword. Mm-hmm. Probably. Really? I mean, it's a possibility. Oh, yeah. That's not what I want. I've I've told you guys what I want, but yeah, uh, we'll see. I mean, the thing is, you can't do the show as like the you know the the swashbuckling younger days of Nick Fury because you don't want to recast Nick uh, Sam Jackson. They don't need now. to recast. Here's my problem with that comment. Yeah. They don't need to recast him. It's yeah. Disney Plus. They're willing to spend millions of dollars on this. They can CG him the fuck up. Oh, I know they can do that. But the problem there is that illusion is ruined the moment he has to run. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that's true. Okay, you can you can sell me on the 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 digital magic of his twenty year old face, but the second he gets mobile, I'm like, that's an old man. You know what? That's you know that's a very good point. That was a problem I had with the Irishman personally. Uh, the fact that it's very clearly old Robert De Niro trying to do physical stuff. Um, I, I don't know. They can pull a. They can also pull a first Avenger and like have a younger actor just do the body. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, mean, my my whole thing, and this is the comic nerd part of me being bothered. Is like, sword doesn't really involve Nick Fury that much, though. At least in the comics, like it's Abigail mm-hmm. Brand. Like, sword is something that's yeah, but it's comic Civil War is also like really fucking different too. Yeah, yeah. but I mean yeah. the the basic notes are there. That's where it mm. just it seems like a really wild jump to be like, oh, and now Nick Fury is part of Sword. I want him to fight David Hasselhoff. <laughs> and I mean, don't get me wrong. Like where we last saw Nick Fury being in outer space, it makes sense. It makes sense mm-hmm. that it would be Sword, but it just. Uh... I, I want Abigail. Also, like, I think if I can think of like another Marvel entity that was adapted in a way that like is so not representative uh, of its source material is AIM because AIM yeah. shows up in Iron Man 3 and it's fucking never talked yeah, about again. Well, yeah. Iron Man 3 yeah, was well, kind of... Yeah. Well, <laughs> AIM is used as like uh, background fodder in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is one of the moments where I was like, wow, fuck the show because they're like throwing out extremists as like a a thing to make their villain of the week scarier it's like oh and he's got extremists in him also isn't he so badass he's he's extremist but he also has uh what was it electronic limbs or something um it's like cool. okay whatever those soldiers that tony beat without suits mm-hmm. it's like uh, cool cool guys um just mm. They just say, the, are, the... "Are you enjoying your Marvel hand?" Are they? They're gonna mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. go ahead. Do you think that they could do like Watcher on the Wall shit, like where he's just like, just yeah. him oh. on the moon, being like, "Uh, what's good?" I mean, yeah, yeah. They could. Yeah. This is my pitch was to the chat was like, just do like a show that's all across time, just like it's different moments from Nick Fury's career that he's talked about and moments that he's, you know, suggested. Um, and just like that, I feel like that would be an interesting thing. You bring in a different director for every episode and it's just like an hour of Nick Fury. I don't know. Talking to Alexander Pierce. I would watch, I would watch that. Oh yeah. Um, just an episode about like what that relationship was like, um, when they were friends, <laughs> And uh, before things really went uh, sour between the two of them, uh, for reasons that we all know. I, know, um, I imagine Metal Gear-esque hijinks happened between mm-hmm. the two of them when they were both secret spies. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, they will get hurtless and box on top of a robot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It, it, Nick Fury puts yeah. an eye patch on a dog. Yes. Oh, yeah. God. Give it to me. Just, just give it to me. This, Are you yeah, in this, a motherfucking hind D? That's my pitch. And on the Connor, I do think you bringing up the younger casting thing, that is actually a very good point. Because I don't I don't know how you recast Samuel Jackson, how you cast somebody to play younger Samuel Jackson. Um, that will be really hard and we've seen in recent years people really fail at I would at what I would describe as similar um feats. Uh looking at 
uh, solo a Star Wars story in particular. Um, but I, I I feel like if they have an interesting enough story when they do it, and they again if they pull it off well enough, I don't really think it would matter. Um, we'll see. I don't I don't know what this will be. It could just be like Nick Fury when he was on the run in between Winter Soldier and oh, Ultron. Yeah. Like that's also a thing that they could easily do. Um, it's just like weird alternative programming where it's just Nick Fury sitting in front of a fireplace and just reading the newspaper yes. for 40 minutes. Sure. Yes. Yeah. 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 Or it's I, I Nick Fury fights Modoc. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I want to see. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that would be a way to bring AIM back and have them in their yellow goddamn suits with the beekeeper helmets because that's the way mm-hmm. AIM is supposed to look. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Um... Yeah, I don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, but like I said, I heard the comments on this stuff because it is a lot of it is just existing at, at a conceptual stage yep. at this point, yeah. and like announcing new stuff now, or at least like following up on announcement about new stuff, is strange to me because everything's mm-hmm. still so uncertain. Well, yeah, with I, with the numbers rising again, it's it's not looking good. <laughs> yeah, um, looking at it. See, um, they did announce the co-star. One of the variants is... coming to Netflix, and it's been killed. <laughs> yes, um, looking at this because I didn't look too closely at this. They did announce him with a co-star already, um, which I didn't realize that they were that far along. Uh, Kyle Bradstreet. I don't know if that's yeah. I'm no, okay, he's the writer. Uh, so he's this guy's cred. His biggest cred is that he worked on Mr. Robot. Um, which isn't that's not bad. That's not a bad place to start from. And that, eh. if that's any indication of the tone of his Nick Fury show, I'm very, very much yes. for that. I, I don't. Um, that kind of makes me less interested because I do not care for Mister Robot all that much. Really? Uh, I don't. I here's my problem, Mister Robot. Mm. I my my experience with people who are super into conspiracy theories. Uh, they love that show, and I just cannot. I look at it. I'm like, this is too edge lordy for me. Mm, that's fair enough. I'm like a show that makes yeah. edgy nerd yeah smarter than they are. I mean, yeah. My biggest problem with that show is like it is sucking on Fight Club's dick really, really hard. <laughs> yes, um, it is. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like the talk, okay, talk nine thousand. Somebody watched Fight Club a billion times and wrote their own fan fiction and then just changed all the names. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Robot is the twilight of fucking TV shows. It's just based on somebody's fan fiction. Uh, I mean, if it was, I would not be shocked in the least bit. Um, but I don't, Hunter, I'm really just talking about the tone of that show. I'm not talking yeah. about the nature of that show. But that show is very good at like espionage stuff and leaning more towards like I guess realistic espionage when they do, um, and how like the black market works. At least I think it's a good depiction of that. I know that they I, went to a lot of experts. The yeah, second for the, some realism. Like my wife and I watched the second and third seasons. I think it was, and we really mm-hmm. enjoyed it. And it definitely got away from from having Fight Club's testicles nestled firmly oh, yeah. on its chin um like it it started doing its own thing pretty much second season forward like it it yeah, yeah it, it got away from that shadow real quick like it it did that i understand it wanted to have that shock but it's just like hey this has already been done before my guy let's try something mm-hmm. different yeah the show only got better i would say mm-hmm. as somebody who did not care for the second season all that much the third season was a vast improvement and i thought the fourth season and I did, did they get to five seasons? I can't remember because I don't know of it. Um, but they ended on a very in a very strong place. Um, so yeah, again, if if it's a similar tone, I mean, more fitting within the Marvel scheme of things. Like I'm I'm very into that, and it does make me think that maybe an older Nick Fury is what they would do. Um, because that is interesting. Him still doing spy stuff at his age is. I would watch that. That's a compelling thing. Um, but if it was like if if Sam Jackson wasn't announced as already being uh, attached to this, my interest would just go completely out the window. 
because I, w- I wouldn't care in the least. Um, but well, yeah. Maybe they could maybe they could finally cast a white Nick Fury because that's the only uh-huh. Nick Fury I care mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that, that that's something that will never happen. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank I'm sorry. Thank Fuck Christ. Who have been angry about this for like twelve years or whatever? It's like okay, you need to get over yeah, this. Not, it's not that yeah. Mm. 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 Well, okay, that, let's and, move on. Yeah. Unless we have some other thoughts. Because I, I have nothing. No. Okay. Um, like on this next story, like I wish I could approach it with a shred of fucking optimism, but it's Netflix yeah. and these people. The net the Netflix is the only part of this where I'm like <sighs> Well, that They're and, gonna cancel it after three seasons. <laughs> that and it's it's why are they doing another Conan adaptation when the Conan the Barbarian cartoon was the best serialized version of the Conan character ever? What? None of you are familiar with the cartoon. <laughs> the cartoon. I've never even heard of. It. Yes. Um. It's great. You should. Wait, the cartoon. I remember the cartoon. Video. Yeah, the cartoon was rad. Yeah, they had to collect star metal to make weapons. Oh, to, yeah, like Set was a literally a giant snake dude. Like it was awesome. What the fuck? Yeah, man, look I've it up. Never, Conan the Adventure. I've never heard of this, and I I'm it's on Tubi. Going to. I'm yeah. gonna watch it now because <laughs> oh, no. thank you. Um, <laughs> you're on Tubi. On the, I I am. I mean, the way that I put this in our stories should tell everybody exactly my feelings on Conan. Uh, that 82 um, Milius movie is like fucking biblical to me. <laughs> it's a, it's a yes. foundational movie for me. Um, so, I mean, if it's even like 20% of that and it's not a bad movie, I'm probably in. Um yeah, I don't know. It, we'll see. You were right about Netflix, but at the same time, like I don't think Witcher is going to be three and out just because of how much money they're spending on it. So I think we need to wait till this show actually happens and they actually shoot something and they put out a first season to be like, they'll just get rid of this as fast as they can. But I do understand being like, it's Netflix, though, and they're just going to get rid of it as soon as they can. Um because that just seems to be how they do it. The last, last Conan the Barbarian uh, adaptation was the drizzling oh, fucking shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, but well, that was Conan was given birth ago. to on a battlefield. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it from what I was reading, like, they have the rights to the, the, uh, the, the, the books, and they mm-hmm. can do it in cartoon or live action. So they can kind of do whatever they want going forward, because... Mm-hmm don't know if this will be a animated series maybe kind of like they've been having some success with like castlevania and dragon's dogma okay. and some crazy looking what is this something i don't want to say it's celtic i forget what it is there's some other thing that's coming out soon oh is it the greek something with the greek gods in it but it's done by the same oh. guys who did um who did castlevania so it's a similar animation style this sounds familiar um it could be that i mean I know that they won't do this because he's expensive. I would love if they just had Gendy do this. Oh. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, just give it to me. Well, um, I, I don't, I wonder if he's under contract with HBO Max he, though at this point. He he, pro- he probably is. He's, he has, I mean, he probably has like a home at Warner yeah. Brothers. He's like an actual house on the lot yes. somewhere. Um, But something in his sort of range i guess similar mm-hmm. would be interesting to me but again like as long as it's good as long as it's a good version of conan that's that's my thing like they just need to nail the character for me and the story can't be utter fucking trash <laughs> um and because i'm i'm easy if you can nail the tone um because like conan it precedes a lot of things and that movie in particular I think it set the groundwork for a lot of what's gone on in the last 20 years. I don't think there's a Lord of the Rings without that movie. Um, I don't think there's a Game of Thrones even more so. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to see how they'll handle this or if this will even end up getting made. Um, Cause it might be another 
John Carter situation where it's just like proceeds too much and it's uh, too much of an old concept now at this point. And maybe Milius very much having a very specific take about Conan might be why that movie works and why other adaptations are not as successful. So we'll see. Uh, yeah. Could be good. Who knows? Um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I, you know, it's the the first Conan the Barbarian film is the only one that matters to me. Yeah, and honestly, same. All that will ever matter to me. Um, yeah. So if mm-hmm. if they can do yeah. a, because I mean, I read some of the uh, books when I was younger, like probably middle school, maybe very beginning of high school, and they're mostly like short stories. It's not like they're actual full long involved stories. Some of them connect to each other, but it's, it's ripe to do like a half hour, hour long show, like Mm -hmm. do eight, 10 episodes and just do kind of different stories that are connected the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The nature of that character works for that. Like I don't want Conan to have an arc. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I don't need him to like go through big emotional changes and you know become a different person. Like Conan should no, just I be want Conan. Him to from his event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Uh, oh, and real guess... quick, Hunter, that is not a porno. That was actually a Conan the Barbarian TV show that aired from '97 to '98. Well, it looks like a porno, Eric. Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> Conan the Adventure. God damn it. God damn it. Um do we move uh, do we want to move on to this story that I I really should have cut I don't, but hey I don't know what the fuck Firestarter is. <laughs> Stephen King story. Um I do and I currently don't care about this information. <laughs> Not even like a vindictive or hostile way. It's no, like, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I don't know. I, I do mm-hmm. have something to say about the next story, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know you will. You're just, just gonna have to wait there. Um, real quick, <laughs> just I, I, like Connor said, it. I, I could really care less. Not in a vindictive mm-hmm. way. Just a, it, eh, whatever. It, but, but in the same mm-hmm. sense, I mean, if if they're going to try and treat this with any type of respect, like they did with Doctor Sleep or anything like that, mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Um, I just I, I don't feel, I don't yeah. know what it is. It's so, Stephen King story. Yeah, oh. Hunter. It's very 80s, 70s Stephen King. Like it's a, it's aggressively Stephen King. You know this. Yeah, you know the oh. story already. It's been in a bunch of okay. other stuff. Like, and it was it was one of uh, Drew Barrymore's first like big films. Mm-hmm. It's a young girl who has pyrokinesis and she can't control it. So no. oh, so it's like Karen. she's. Kind of. She's yeah. the uh, she's the child of a guy who was experimented on by the CIA, essentially. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. So she yeah. naturally has the abilities instead of having been experimented on. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Young. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very Stranger Things and a lot of other stuff. So yeah, like it's if they do it and they do it in an interesting way, um, it could be something. Uh, I do like this casting. So Zach Efron has impressed me a lot as an actor. I guess that's really the reason to bring this up. Like, all right, he could be compelling as the father character. I need to know. No, no, all actors should be judged on the work they did a decade ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. he is yeah, high yeah they should. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's yeah he's got to get his head in the game. Um, God fucking. <laughs> um, he's not gonna stop. Nope. Uh, so yeah, like this could be interesting. I need to. I didn't see a director. Uh, no, Keith Thomas. Okay, who wrote? Uh, okay, the writer of this wrote Halloween Kills, which I need to see Halloween Kills first, <laughs> um, because my feelings on that new Halloween have uh, shifted somewhat since when I first saw it. Um, I don't know this director though at all. Um, but yeah, I, I need more stuff. I need a, a, a larger cast. To, to come up and all that other stuff, but yeah, this this could be something. We'll see. Um, I, we've talked before. I'm Bego wants to make a yakuza, movie. right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I honestly don't know what to say about this because yeah. that idea is so loaded on paper, and like, mm-hmm. I don't even know how you would go 
about approaching this idea. Yeah, uh, here's how. Uh, don't make any of the cast English. How about that? <laughs> yep. Yep. Don't hire any white people. That would be a yeah. <laughs> if I hear, it should be all in Japanese. That's the only way to make this movie. Oh, I agree with that stuff too. But also, like, Yakuza is very. The experience is so splintered as far as like yes. what you're gonna get for ten minutes versus what you're gonna get in the next ten minutes. It 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 needs to be, hundred percent off the fucking walls. Um, uh, it because like those games start off with like. Like, Yakuza 6 starts off as a story about a mysterious baby and then ends about, like, a meta-commentary about Japan's militarization post-World War II. Like, it's fucking crazy. You can't... Okay. See, I just... I want the Yakuza movie to just be three and a half hours long and an hour and a half of it is is Ryo playing Space Harrier. And yes. <laughs> uh, another hour and a half of it is him just in a batting cage. And then the last half hour is just him getting in a fight with a guy in the alley. And okay. that's it. Where does... But there's at least 10 minutes of him uh, flirting with... Uh, Damn girl. Like, what the fuck are they? Yes. 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 Uh, but never committing to anything. Yes. He goes to host clubs. He's like... See, here's, here's like the thing. If he doesn't fight somebody on, millenn- on the Millennium Tower at the end of the movie... <laughs> worthless. It doesn't pick up a whole bicycle yes. and beat someone to yeah. with it. What is it? Yes. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it's just a thing of like, I am 100% for Sega making movies now after seeing Sonic. Because like, <laughs> I think I think they understand better than Capcom what they have. Um, what do you mean? Monster no. Hunter, the hot no, film no, coming no. out from... <laughs> <laughs> uh... They they seem to have more vested interest in making the the movies uh, more true to the spirit of the whatever they're making. Um, but I don't know. I I really there is a Yakuza movie and it was a Japanese movie and it sucks. So I don't know. I'm what, well. The look on our faces when Jared Leto is like, uh, no. Uh, I. The only thing I can say is they need to get Takashi Miike to direct this. Yes. Yep. Uh huh. Oh, I agree a lot. Like, because he could capture that bizarreness of the Yakuza games, but also the horrors of the street fights of the Yakuza games. They also did need to get the actors. Did he do that other one? Didn't I, I thought he did that other Yakuza movie. movie? Oh, he did. I think. Yeah. Maybe give him a budget, though, because uh, from what I saw, which is like a brief trailer, um, that movie was very cheap. It was not. Yeah. It it, was... It's very. I've seen it. It's not. It is. It is the room level of bad, I think. Um, they need well, to get he's... the actors from the games because they're all legit actors. And they could feasibly do it. It just he's like Takashi Miike has done movies with Yakuza in the title, but as far as I know, he hasn't actually done a Yakuza like video game adaptation. I think he did. Hold on, I'm looking it up. Okay, but... yeah, I'm I'm trying to see. I know uh, this from watching Up at Noon the other day, and I'm assuming Max Scoville knew what he was talking about. Yeah, but he it, said... it was. It's called yeah. Like a Dragon, and it was mm-hmm. directed by Takashi Miike. Huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah hey, look at that. that. Mm-hmm. Huh. <laughs> this picture mm-hmm. of Kazuya and uh, Majima is hilarious to look at. Apparently, um, they got a lot of weird little stuff wrong. Um, just completely off. So, hmm. Yeah. A, mo- a, 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 a video game adaption movie from the 2000s. That got stuff mm. wrong. Mm. Mm. Never happened. No, that, that's, that's a golden era. What are you talking about? <laughs> Remember Hollow Man? Great film. Uh huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Aside from, I want to see it. Um. I don't have any more uh, yeah. heavy thoughts. If it comes out, I will actually watch this because I played enough of Yakuza Zero to be like, all right. Yes. This is fucking crazy. This is one of us. I I don't know about that, but if somebody actually makes a movie of this and they release it, 
and there are still theaters. Um, <laughs> and we aren't in the post-apocalyptic wasteland that Eric bluntly reminded us of. Um, sure, I'll, I'll watch it. Why? Why? Why not? What? What else do I have to do? Nothing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that'll be. Fun. I will be ushered around by an army of pugs that will carry my bone <laughs> thrown on it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Channing Tatum is your little person. I will have a morning no, dancing boy. I will have a morning star made out of a child's skull. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. This has been this has been the news hour. I feel like we should wrap up. <laughs> mm. uh, um, uh, so we're going to a trick or trash with movie dumpster. Satan's little helper is out. We're going to record the midnight hour tomorrow. Uh, Satan's Little Helpers, certainly a movie that I have opinions on. Um, uh, we interviewed the director. Well, they did. I was unavailable. Um, so go check that stuff out. We're giving away some prizes. You can listen to the episodes here, some code words, and you can send them to us and, you know, enter for a chance to win some cool shit. Other than that, um, I don't really have the energy for any more advanced plugs. Nailed it. Yeah. Uh, so Lost Arrow Podcast, uh, we did uh, an episode titled My Three Draculas, um, which uh, I- I'm just proud of myself that, uh, that that's a thing that we did. Uh, so go listen to that episode. Listen to the Cronenberg episode that we're going to be recording. We have not recorded it yet, and it might be coming out a little bit later than usual. Um, so listen to that once it's out. And uh, keep tuning in for LHP Spooky Tober. Uh, so yeah. A quick, uh, quick extra to add to that. Apparently, Cronenberg's son has a new film coming out. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's called. Uh, oh God, what is it called? I just saw about it today, but I forgot what the name was. But I didn't realize you guys were doing a Cronenberg episode. Something, but... something weird, exploder or something. It's about a woman who like um, uses psychic powers for corporate espionage. Um, hmm. and also, like, cool. people. With her mind, um, which that doesn't sound like something the son of David Cronenberg would make at all. The fruit um, doesn't fall far from the circuitry laden flesh I'm just, tree. I'm just caught up on the fact that David Cronenberg fucks, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Apparently, his son has done a bunch of movies. None of them I've been interested in up until this one, honestly. Antiviral was good. Antiviral. Yeah. Okay, Antiviral is really good. Okay. Yeah. If you, it, wow. Okay. Well, now I have to watch it. <laughs> Yeah. Um the uh, wow, okay. Um yeah. cool. Just be prepared for everything in your life for about a day to just make you feel gross. Yep. Ah, <laughs> ah, so I won't be watching it immediately then. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um uh, cool. Hunter. Don't follow me on social media, even though every time I say that somebody brings it up anyways. Uh, you can't trust it. Hunter, before you were on the show, I'm sure at least two of us have given away your social media credentials on some program. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so don't follow me anywhere. Uh, d- d- yeah, I guess well, that's it. Okay. I have no energy. Uh, I'm Eric Dorchek. You can find me at Eric underscore Fedor. There's pictures of dogs and cats and food and comics. Um, I'm a Phantom Zone doing that thing. I'm other places doing other things. Uh, and I will not rest until hashtag Browgate is accomplished and the thing actually has giant rocky eyebrows like he's supposed to. Because if he doesn't, that means that minorities and women have invaded my comics and mm-hmm. they're the worst. According, Justice according to yeah. according to Browgate. Also, um, my alternate uh, Instagram is young underscore Kame, where you can find pictures of me praying. Uh, click clack, it's the devil man. Uh, you can find you can find pictures of uh, Master. Not that's not Master Chief. That's Doom Guy with uh, that that thing from Animal Crossing on its back. Isabel, first. Of Thank all. you. You can find pictures of my socks. Pictures of Batman. Things along those lines. So that remember, young underscore Kame. Oh yeah, that time that I had Crystal Head vodka, maybe. Don't worry about it. You spend real money on it. No, I God. okay. First of all, I didn't spend money on it. Let's get that out of the way. 
<laughs> was not me who made that decision. It's not that good anyway, so I don't know why they bought it. Um, I don't know anyways, either. You shouldn't have gotten all angry at Joe over that. Um, but yeah, that's that's me. That's all I got. Well, before something horrifying happens. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs>